Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to the adventure mode now on difficulty 7.5. But don't worry, we will still be going for a minimum of difficulty 10 in today's episode. But first, I am trying to look for a blue portal. The reason being, I think it's about time we give the vulture a bit of a retrofit, but so far I've been incredibly unlucky with finding blue portals. As soon as you look for one, they apparently all disappear. So we will be back very shortly with the blue portal, which will both increase our difficulty by a fair margin and give us a chance to do some building. And apparently, we have yet another enemy, and this one is a ship. Not sure what type of ship, though. I'll go take a closer look. So it turns out, it's simply one of the Onyx Watch ships, one of the much smaller variants, and honestly, quite a good looking one. Although, certainly no match for the Shrike, as there it goes already exploding, and pretty much all of its metal being shredded fairly quickly. Hopefully, once we reach level 10, we'll see a few more difficult opponents, or if not, we can always just keep on increasing the difficulty. It's a thing we can keep doing, we just have to make sure to keep on checking what level of enemy are attacking us in each zone. So now, back to hunting for a blue portal. The joy. Well, that's a pretty cool thing to stumble upon. We are currently on difficulty 8.2. I'm still trying to desperately find myself a blue portal. And we have this tiny little Scarlet Dawn ship, which is just completely stalled for reasons I'm not sure of. Perhaps it's run out of fuel or something? Either way, it's attacking this tiny little Onyx Watch ship. So, I may try and capture this just because of how cool it is. So let's move on forward. Let's send out some torpedoes, which should hopefully only go for the Onyx Watch Vessel, and then see if we can get close enough to capture it without being lasered to death. Well, a couple of torpedoes did hit the right target, but the rest of them have decided, I know, let's attack the Scarlet Dawn Flyer. So, hello. Oh, that looked far more painful than I was hoping. Oh, there goes the bottom section, and it's in the air, it's AI dead and it's been destroyed, so my stupidity has destroyed the enemy. Well, at least we can capture the Onyx Watch instead. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's say that was the plan. To be honest, I just wanted to see inside of it. I was going to scrap it anyway, since we still have the Shrike somewhere far behind us, which I do want to convert to fight later. Ooh, hello, that's a problem. Actually turning on the Shrike there. Okay, that should hopefully have been enough, and no, once again, thankfully we can move underwater, just as fast as possible, please take me there. No, I am the worst at capturing things. Well, at least there was explosions and resources. That didn't go as well as planned. The Shrike versus a small Onyx Watch vessel, who will be the victor? There we go, the Shrike has just released its bombs, way too early to be honest, and it doesn't seem like these are going to be able to hit at all. Well, that was a bit of a disappointment, try again Shrike once you try and do another attack run. Third attack run, the second attack run did a little bit of damage but not much, but there we are, they are all magnetic and all heading towards the hull of the craft, and boom! The back section is now completely removed. The problem is, of course, this particular ship is being moved by its sails, not by any propellers at the back, so it's still moving forwards. Oh, well, it did have the AI on the back, apparently. One last attack run. There we are. Just a little bit of insult to injury. The Shrike, everyone. Quite a frail craft, and quite easy to counter, however, if you get hit by the mines, they can be somewhat devastating. Well done, Shrike. 
finally, after one of the least eventful hours of any From the Depths history, we are finally heading towards a blue warp gate. It's time to do some serious work to the helicopter, and honestly, I'm not too sure what I'm going to end up doing. There are a load of things which I want to do. I sort of want swarm missiles, very short range swarm missiles, which are a lot cheaper than the old variants. I would like a laser missile defense system. I would like to upgrade the cannons we have, and I would like to improve the overall shape of the vulture. So there are a lot of things, and I'm not quite sure how many we're actually going to be able to afford. So we will see how it turns out. Here we are then, in the Forever Alone type warp plane, with warp difficulty 10.7, which means once we leave this area and go through another red warp gate, since that's all that's available in this area, we are going to probably be over 11. So there we are, finally fighting stronger enemies, hopefully, once we leave. We've been here for 36 seconds, and now... It's time to do a bit of work on the Vulture, and maybe on the Shrike, depending on how much time we have. This is going to be a fair bit of work. So then, on to the montage! Well, there we are. That was a lot longer than I originally expected, and honestly, I'm not quite sure if I'm happy with the end result. I'm also certainly not happy with how the time lapse is going to look, because I have changed my mind so many times. But at this point, I don't think that is a surprise to anyone who's been watching my channel for any amount of time. This has took a very long time indeed, but here we are with the Vulture Mark III, I believe, or Mark IV, which is definitely going to need a rename. Now, as almost always, I'm not quite finished yet. The movement capability of this thing is almost complete, but not quite. The shields are not complete at all, and as you can tell, it's currently rocking around quite a bit because the systems in place to keep this thing balanced are far too powerful for what is actually a surprisingly light vehicle. On the upside, this does mean if we take damage to any of our stabilization rotor blades, the others should be able to keep this thing somewhat stable, not simply flying off into the ether. So there is that. It is much heavily armoured than, than the old version of the Vulture, and these two back cannons are far more powerful than the old variant. 
but then I ran out of resource and needed to add one of the old cannons because I simply couldn't afford the new ones. The new ones fire four times faster than the old version and they fire the same shells at the same range and the same speed. So in essence, we have over doubled our firepower. Now on the downside, we no longer have torpedoes, I couldn't afford missiles, and I couldn't afford a lot of other systems. I do have the anti-laser system currently in place, and I do have the flares, but that's pretty much it. Of course, I also have all of the detection systems all nicely in place. I am happy with it though. It does go faster than the old Vulture. If we quickly go into this mode, we can see it goes to about 75, I believe, and that that's its normal speed, whereas the old vulture kind of stalled at around about 59. So we have increased speed, we have increased armor, and we do now have increased space, so as we get more resource we can continue to upgrade. I was tempted to add a small torpedo system, but then I wouldn't have enough resource left in case we took damage. We need to have some resource left just for repairs. So with that, I will be taking some name suggestions in the comments below, and let's go through a red portal and see if we can have a fight. Now this does turn a little bit better as well than the old Vulture because I'm using these controls. The forward thrust can now contribute to turning left and right, and my god, does that help. Come on, let's go straight through the portal. We can do it first time, we can turn better now. There we are, first time, and it's going to rain. Of course it is. Well, I'll be right back, hopefully, once an enemy appears. We are now in difficulty 11.8. It's at this moment that I realise I don't have backwards thrusters anymore, and suddenly harvesting from resource zones is even more annoying. Maybe I'll just continue on and find enemies. I'm not a harvester, I'm a fighter. For people who have not played From the Depths before, or have simply not watched enough From the Depths videos, this may look like a fairly innocent, fairly weak flyer. But in fact, this is the killer of new players. This is the infamous Flying Squirrel. A real test for new players, because it dodges regular cannons and missiles incredibly well, and its own missiles are surprisingly effective, if incredibly short range. Now, we should be okay against this, but right now we are at a very long range, so I imagine our shots are going to completely miss as it kind of ducks and dives absolutely everywhere, as you can see. It looks so innocent- oh, yep, yeah, that's our new cannons, guys. As you can see, shoots a bit faster. Tiny bit faster. And right now we're showing why the Flying Squirrel is an absolute nightmare. I've got a better detection system than last time. Can you see why this kills so many new players? Hit the thing! This may take a while. We're so far away, we can't even see ourselves, and it's a pretty clear day. Oh, has it repaired? Nope, it's just doing its dance, it'll do that forever until we get a bit closer. Okay, stop wasting shots, let's get a little bit closer and then kill the poor thing. But I'm still happy that we've seen this, because this is a godly class enemy, which means we should be fighting godly class enemies. On a side note, I found out something absolutely lovely. If you are in the middle of the water, about to die, you can build a brand new building, as long as you have a resource nearby, and then simply put a heartstone attached to it. This means you have a little floating heartstone somewhere which is keeping you alive. There it is, that's currently keeping me alive, so now I can check where the AI is without dying, at least that's the hope. Where is the AI on this thing? I've never really checked. Well, that's a connector. Let's go back to the Heartstone for a second and charge back up. My little life preserver, and then we'll go and check again. Okay, I can see it. Hello. Are you mine? Yes, you are. We now have a flying squirrel, and where is my flyer? Over there, I just can't see it because of the mist. Yeah, I can just about see it. I'll have to put down a couple of heartstones to get there. Okay, fantastic. Let's get back, mount the flying squirrel onto the back of our craft, and then go and face off against the next enemy, which hopefully will continue with the godly theme. At least, hopefully. Yoink. Thank you, heartstones.
That looks really creepy in the mist with all the green kind of static. Note to self, we've made a very creepy craft. So I'm very sorry, Mr. Shrike. You are a very interesting craft indeed, but when it comes to the flying squirrel, it's going to be hard to beat that. I'm very sorry. So we are going to be scrapping you right now. That's the wrong one. That's what I wanted. Hello, and Mr. Shrike, goodbye. We can always make you again later if we so desire. And Mr. Flying Squirrel, you are now ours. I can hardly see a thing, by the way, so it isn't just the video. I can just about see it. There it is. Hello, Flying Squirrel. Get close enough so at least I can do some repairs. So it turns out those splashing noises was not from our own craft, but it was from this fellow over there. Hello, enemy. Who are you? No time to check. Just shoot it down. I can't see it. There it is. Hello. Explosions. Metal and wood flying everywhere. I have no idea what you are, but our cannons just shredded you. We need to go through a western warp gate. Why are we so... misty at the moment? Now that it's apparently finally cleared up, let's add a couple of repair tentacles to the back here so that we can repair the flying squirrel whenever it's docked, and let's move it back a little bit further. There we are. So yeah, this is one of the most fearsome of the Deepwater Guard, and isn't it absolutely adorable? It's not outright strong, and that's why I absolutely adore it. It's not particularly expensive, it's not particularly powerful, it just really messes up a lot of basic systems. And wow, we are rocking far too much. As soon as I add a few more systems so I get where the center of mass is going to end up, don't worry, the rocking will stop. This is a non-permanent issue, and it's not really an issue in terms of fighting or anything, it's just an issue in terms of it looks really weird when you're trying to explore everywhere. So west is over there, let's go there as fast as possible. So, maybe difficulty 11 isn't enough. I've actually found out that the difficulty goes to at least 100, so I can assume we're still very, very low. So next time, we will jump up to difficulty 20. This is just one of those problems when you're playing a game mode that hasn't really been played too much by a lot of people. A lot of the information is quite hard to find. Let's just get the vulture as close as possible. And then rain down hell and see just how fast this thing will die. Oh, it seems like it's under attack by something else, so let's stop that. What just fired at us before we completely obliterate that little thing? Well, it can't be Deepwater Guard. That is an Onyx Watch Vessel. Hello. Now, we could try and capture that. It's not too powerful, and once again, I am starting to think that perhaps we still need to increase the difficulty a bit, but it is still attacking us. If we attack it a little bit... Perhaps turning off some of our main turrets, we could capture that and get a lot of resource, because it is essentially a floating lump of metal. Not that I can actually see what's going on right now. Ow. That hurt slightly, kind of. Not really overly. We've already repaired the damage taken, and rather than simply capture the enemy or destroy it, we're going to have a bit of fun, so here we are attacking it with the Flying Squirrel, which turns out doesn't have a friend or foe mechanism, which means it is trying to missile us. So thank you very much to the Flying Squirrel. We're your friend now. No need to shoot half of your missiles at us. We are thankfully so far away they can't hit us, but still, annoying nonetheless. The Flying Squirrel does have mines, so if it gets close enough to drop them it should do that as well. Oh, just about dodging that shot. I believe in you, Flying Squirrel. There they are. Doing a little bit of damage to the back. Has the Flying Squirrel been nerfed? I distinctly remember those missiles doing more. Though saying that, perhaps it was because I was more used to smaller amounts of damage back then. I'm not too sure. For its cost, though, the Flying Squirrel is. Oh, thank you, shield! Truly devastating. That shield, though. Any of those close enough? Yes, they are. Okay, it can no longer move. This may take a while.
Okay, this is taking a little bit too long. We are quite long range at the moment, but we should still be able to do at least a little bit of damage from here. There we are, the main turret's peppering it with shots. It almost looks like blue static. Yep, that's very quickly stripping everything from the top. I'm almost tempted to make them into flak shells, to be honest, because that could quickly remove pretty much all weapons on the surface of an enemy. Not quite accurate enough still. I still think my, my detection system needs a little bit of work, especially with range. And perhaps slightly stronger shells as well, more kinetic damage, less armor piercing, or perhaps full on armor piercing with less kinetic. Either way, there goes the Onyx Watch, and with that, I'm afraid to say I am all out of time for today's episode. If you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favorites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths, the adventure series, is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode, we are going to continue on trying to find harder enemies. We are going to go through a few red portals, possibly into perhaps Strength 20, and see what we can see. So thank you so much for watching. And goodbye.